Happy February 28th, or as most people know it, National Chocolate Souffle Day. Are you serious? That's a real thing? Oh, great. So I'm assuming you didn't bring me any chocolate souffle. Sorry, man. That's the first I've ever heard of this holiday. It's fine. I guess we can split this chocolate cupcake. I'm Aiden. I'm Josh. And this is Kids Church Online. This morning, we're starting a new series about a man who was excellent in almost everything he did. A personal hero of mine, Daniel. Daniel Craig? <laughs> the guy who played James Bond? That'd be cool, but no. Oh, Daniel Tiger. Daniel. The puppet from Mr. Rogers? <laughs> no, no. Oh, I know. Daniel Boone. Aiden, why would we do an entire series about an American frontiersman? Daniel Radcliffe, Danny Elfman, Dan Marino, Danny DeVito, Sir Daniel Day-Lewis, Dan Hansen? <laughs> okay, obviously all of those are famous Daniels who are excellent at what they do, and some of them, in fact, are personal heroes of mine. But we are talking about Daniel from the Bible, you know, the book of the Bible named Daniel. Oh, if we're talking about excellence, then there's no better Daniel. <laughs> Let's check out this morning's passage of scripture. Now, before we jump into Daniel chapter 1, we need a little backstory. There was once a powerful empire called Babylon that was expanding their kingdom all over the world. The people of Israel thought that they were untouchable. Well, because they were God's people. However, they didn't live like it. They rejected what God wanted and tried to live their wicked lives. So when Babylon came to wage war, God let the Israelites have what they wanted. He stepped back and let them fight this huge and powerful empire all by themselves. Obviously, they lost. <laughs> The Babylonians destroyed their homes, stole all their stuff, and even took them away as slave prisoners. So, when we find Daniel here in chapter 1, he's a slave, taken from his family. His home is destroyed, and he's forced to live in a faraway country where people don't know his God, and they don't care about doing what's right. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, the chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude of everything, every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was going to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter into the king's service. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission to not defile himself this way. Daniel wanted to worship God and live for him with every part of his life. One of the ways that, that people of that time would worship God was with the food that they ate. And I know this might sound a little weird to us, but Daniel knew that this was an important way for, for him to worship and it's something he had to stick to to show that he loved God. Do you think God really cares what kind of food we eat? Well, I mean, it is talked about in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. I mean, why would it really matter what someone eats? If you go to church every Sunday and read your Bible every morning... I'd say they're doing pretty good. Okay, like, I'd agree with that, right? Both of those are important parts of our spiritual lives, but God wants us to commit our entire lives to him. So you're saying God cares what color socks I put on? <laughs> I'm saying that even things that seem unimportant, like what you wear, those things are important to God. He made everything that's in the world, and he cares about it. God wants us to do everything the best that we can. So... If you're going to pick out some funky socks, then rock them. If you're going to learn to play the guitar, then practice and become great. If I want to be a chef, then I'm going to create each meal and make sure that it is delicious. You got it. Whatever you do in life, do it as if you're doing it for God. Like Daniel did it. Do it with excellence. <laughs>